This meeting of the Gazin City Council will now come to order, and the chair calls on Assistant City Clerk Jenny Shavers for the roll call. Harris? Here. Williams? Here. Avery? Here. Eccles? Here. Stewart? Here. Cannon? Here. And Reed? Here. We have a quorum present, and the meeting is now open for business. Councilman Deverick Williams will bring our invocation today. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to come together today, Father. We thank you for the opportunity, Father, to come and, and, and govern, Father, in a, in a godly manner, Father. We thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon the city. And right now we ask, Father, that you will continue to grow and prosper and bless the city touch the minds and the hearts of those who are in decision-making capacities, Father God, and, and continue to, to prosper us going forward. Protect us, keep us, and grow us, Father, for it's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to remind everybody to please make sure your cell phones are either turned off or in a vibrate position. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting on September the 20th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to approve. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of the accounts for the week of September the 16th and the 22nd. So, so moved. moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to approve. Proclamations, Mayor. <laughs> Unfinished business. These three ordinances were presented last week for the first reading. A is an ordinance requiring deposit fee for certain garbage collection customers. This requires new customers, current customers with a late payment history, a new customer named on an account, and previous customers without garbage collection services at their time in their name in the prior six months to pay a deposit fee equal to twice the quarterly fee. What is the pleasure of the council? The move to pass. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Is there any discussion on it? You take the vote. All those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We'll stay. We have one abstention. Motion carries to adopt. B is an ordinance further regulating exemptions from unpaid from residential garbage collection fees. This requires persons owing unpaid balance on a current or prior account to pay in full or make arrangements to pay before being granted an exemption. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to approve. Second. Is there any discussion? This is a, an attempt to uh, get a handle on our garbage uh, fee collections. It's been, at one point, we had about a million dollars out there. That's in, it's, uh, it's a really sticky situation where, you know, what do you do? You take the can away, and what do they do with the garbage? So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a very simple uh, problem to solve, but this is an attempt to improve it. So we'll see how it goes. If it's run into too much uh, trouble down the road, we'll change it. Any other discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? All those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. We have one abstention. Motion carries to adopt. C is an ordinance pro prohibiting certain trucks on portions of Brook Avenue. Trucks having more than four axles will not be permitted to drive on Brook Avenue, commonly called Pump, pump Station Road between Walnut Street and Centurion Way. What's the pleasure of the council? Motion we approve. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, we've had a bunch of transfer trucks and big trucks coming down these roads during school hours and afternoons and early in the mornings getting stuck in people's yards and in ditches and keeping people awake three or four o'clock in the morning. 
So that's just not really deemed a uh, truck route through there. And so when this passes, the police will be able to start writing tickets on these trucks. And that is from Walnut Street to Centurion Way. Any other discussion? Eric, will you take the vote? All those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Nine is a resolution reappointing members to the Electrical Affairs Committee. This reappoints Jim, Jimmy Reed Jr. for a term expiring June 28, 2014, and Tom McElrath and Ray Coleman for terms expiring June 28, 2015. Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? All those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Here is a resolution authorizing incentives for contributions to United Way. This authorizes the city to provide various incentives for employees to make payroll deductions for contributions to United Way. Drawings will be held for selection of eligible em employees to receive the incentives. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? All those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. <clears throat> New business. Mr. President, I have one item. Resolution uh, approving amendment uh, to, rule, to rules and regulations of Fire Cemetery and Alabama City Cemetery to require seal and lined concrete vaults for all earth interments. I would like to ask for unanimous consent to consider this, uh, this uh, resolution today. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider the item as new business today, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, permission is granted. Move to adopt. Second. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? All those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Any other new business? Department reports, committees, boards, are there any? Looks to me like we have a prisoner <laughs> <out there. laughs> You want to tell us what that's all about? Uh, we also have two police officers here. They must be watching for something. <laughs> <laughs> You're need more than two. Oh, 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 wow. oh, oh. What a woman, what a woman. <laughs> No, I did want to explain my outfit. I, I try to dress a little bit nicer when I come and address the council, but this week is Banned Books Week, and as I'm sure most of you noticed, I was unfortunately arrested Friday afternoon for reading banned books. And the point of this week is it's an Al American Library Association uh, to bring awareness to the fact that everybody has the right to read what they want to read and what they deem suitable for themselves and for their families. It's not an opportunity to tell people what they should be reading or to force any type of literature on anybody else, but to say that we all have the right to choose what is appropriate for us and appropriate for our children and to bring to light that some of the things that get banned and some of the ways that literature has been used in the past has been very discriminatory against a lot of different types of people and the different things that get banned. Some of the reasons are just absolutely absurd. I have where the sidewalk ends. It is one of my absolute favorite <coughs> banned and challenged books by Shel Silverstein, a very wonderful group of children's poems. And I just wanted to say thank you to the council and the sheriff's department for being so good and, and the mayor for being so great about letting me get arrested and letting me drive around in this all week. I mean, I say that now. If I actually get arrested for driving around in this all week, I'm, I might not thank you for <laughs> going along with this insane idea. But all of the staff at the library, a lot of them are wearing orange jumpsuits. So if you see orange jumpsuits at the library this week, there's no cause for alarm. We are just celebrating our right and freedom to read. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. That's a good thing. 
citizens request Alfred Williams for police not performing their job. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Would you uh, do me the kindness or let me know when my five minutes is up? I'll be glad to. Thank All you. All right. Uh, for the record, uh, again, I'm Al Williams, uh, 932 4th Avenue. Voice is a little hoarse. I've been doing a lot of visiting. I'd like to <laughs> commend uh, the person that just came before me. Uh, I've heard a lot, you know, said about her, you know, at the Gaston Public Library. And so I see that at least there's one creative person that's working with, you know, city government. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was not given the privilege to wear uh, orange uniform at the Edward County Jail on September the 17th when I was falsely arrested by the Gaston Police Department. The only reason why I wanted to come before the council on the 13th was to apologize to my family for any false images that may have been created by my appearing on the council agenda on 9 6 11 to speak in behalf of a raise a dollar raise for the trolley drivers uh, after that I got some comments people gonna think you crazy you know leave those people at city all alone stay in your place and so on and so on so I asked through the council pro tem Mr. Uh, council Pro Tem, uh, to let me come before the council on what is it, September 13th, which was a week following the week that I was on the council agenda. Whoever made the decision, they did not allow me the privilege to come and tell my family that I love them, that uh, I may have created the impression that they were not there for me. My family. In the two years that I have been without an automobile ha has been there for me. My ex-wife have driven me anywhere I wanted, you know, to go in the city. Mostly I've ridden the trolley because I didn't want to be a bother to my, you know, family. The city get most of the government money for the trolley from the federal government. Am I near my five minutes? No, but you need to stick to your subject today not what you did last week or the week well all right back to the gas and police department i was falsely arrested i can't call the officer name right that's right that correct yes you don't call the name all right can't call the officer name at uh, a local hospital i went to the hospital to seek medical assistance i was arrested at uh, this medical facility uh, I was not drunk, as some people have, you know, alluded. I did not resist the officer's arrest. He told me, you are arrested. I got in his car. He handcuffed me, took me to the Edward County Jail. My business in being here is to say that the officer did not follow any procedure. From what I know, Every one of the, well not all of them, most of the gas and city police vehicles are supposed to have a camera in them. Uh, I asked the officer what, you know, where was the camera so that he could record what was going on so it wouldn't be said that, you know, something happened that didn't happen. The officer said, this vehicle does not have a camera and, you know, I don't really care that it doesn't have a camera. He was a young, 30-some-year-old rash young man I'm 62 years old and I've been in, I've never been arrested in the city never been near no jail with the exception of the time that I protested college Madden being killed and other incidents yes I'm a civil rights activist and I'm proud of it I've been at City Hall to uh, knock on the mayor's door with Hosea Williams so the officer like I say, I not really having no kind of knowledge of what my constitutional rights were, that I had the right to be first be told, you know, what you know what my rights are according to the Miranda law. Nobody told me nothing about what my rights were. Got to the county jail, was denied the 
the privilege to call a person I wanted to call. That you can't call him. Is my five minutes up? No, no, no. Just keep talking. She'll let you know. 30 seconds. Huh? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. All right. So to my family, I want to say I love you. I've made efforts to rekindle a relationship with you. I've called most of you, if not all of you. I said last week that I was going to divorce my family. I retract that. I know it was not a good thing to do, but I was just trying to protect my family. Thank you, Alfred. <laughs> Mr. President, can I comment there just one second, please? Sure. Uh, I appreciate the gentleman coming up here talking to the guests and city council. Uh, I appreciate everything he had to say to us today, but this is the guests and city council, <clears throat> but we're not the guests and civil service board. The guests and civil service board meets September the 11th at 5.30, so you might want to speak with them because we have no control over any of that. And out of those uh, civil service board, they're appointed by the governor. <laughs> So I'll let you know so you would know. Yeah. Okay. Okay, remarks by the mayor and the council. You want to start? Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, <laughs> since I'm already talking to my well go ahead you and ask finish. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, so I can go ahead and finish. Uh, I do appreciate everybody here today. I see my friend Ricky Hunter, he's sitting in the back today, and I appreciate him coming today. He's one of my best friends. I appreciate him coming. Also, to remind everybody, October 15th from 6 to 10, we're going to have music on Megan. It'll be at the Alabama City Gazebo. There's two or four groups will be there playing. We've already lined up October the 27th for the uh, Halloween giveaway on Wall Street. It'll be from 5 to 7.30. Uh, it should be bigger and better this year than it has been before. Also, too, um, I know it's probably getting all confused. October the 11th at 6 o'clock, we'll have a district meeting for people in South Gaston. It'll start at 6 o'clock. That's all I got. Ben? <clears throat> it's at Banks Park Activity Cement Center. I'm sorry. Ben? Sure. Uh, this morning at 8.30, I had the privilege of going by Ray Thompson School up in North Gaston. Uh, it's in Derek Williams. I'm going to let Derek elaborate on this, but I did want to say that uh, I'm, I'm a big proponent of reading and comprehension. And Derek, that school, uh, I was impressed. Number one with the teachers. But when you get in those classrooms with those kids with those iPads, first, the first thing I thought of, Johnny, was what in the world? They got an iPad that don't even know how to read a book or uh, nothing. Then they came out with the book, overcame that objection. Then I said they hadn't got a pencil. They don't need a pencil. On that iPad, they just add, subtract. They did everything in the world with their finger all the way through, you know. But the intensity in the classrooms, uh, Billy, were unreal. Uh, those kids, when I was in school, I was over there trying to tear the end of the roll up or something. You know? don't tell us what uh, they don't do that. The they got that iPad, man, and they down on it, and they doing work, and they learn it. It's amazing. Anyway, I was really impressed with the school with the teachers and with the students and what they're learning and how they learn it. And I hope you elaborate on it, Derek. It's really good. That's all I have. Yeah. Um, I would like to, we've talked a lot about Civil Service Board, and I'd like to just bring up a little something that you might not know about it. Uh, when that law was passed, it affected three cities, uh, Tuscaloosa, Anniston, and Gadsden. Uh, since then, Tuscaloosa and Anniston have had the wisdom to make some changes in it. Uh, in Anniston, they have a uh, city manager who hires, fires police chiefs and police officers. In Tuscaloosa, the, that's the mayor's responsibility. So those two ch cities have changed the civil service law to, uh, and we're, we're the only city in Alabama now that has the civil service law that we have, the only one. And you know, this, so I, I could call on you, citizens of Gaston, if you're not happy with the service you're getting from the police department, or, and you talk to your legislatures, they're the only ones that can change it, and uh, they don't seem to be wanting to change it. But uh, so, if you're not happy, talk to your legislatures, get them to tweak that law a little bit, so 
that we can have a little better uh, cooperation between the police and fire department, and the police and, and the mayor, really. Uh, this civil service law that we have now is, is a recipe for conflict, and it's always been that way. The mayor and the chief bump heads, and it's, and it's just uh, it's not a way to, for the city to progress and, and uh, perform and, and provide the service to the citizens they deserve. It's just a formula for, for chaos, and it's been that way. We need to change it. That's all I got to say. Robert? That's, that's very interesting. Because uh, I thought we had a deal uh, where it was going to be changed. As a matter of fact, uh, we were almost promised that it was going to be changed. They had the, the bill drafted and legislation drafted and uh, in this last session, and I just assumed that it was going to pass because I had told someone, man, we're going to... We're going to finally get this thing right in Gadsden. And for whatever reason, it fell apart. Uh, I do know the reason, but I guess Thank you. <laughs> Bob said we can't call names, so I won't call names. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a sad situation, and I'm glad uh, Bill brought it up. The fact that uh, when we started out, it was three cities that had the same similar act, and the people in two of those cities had the wisdom, the sense, and the nerve to change it and put it like it should be. And so hopefully, uh, their legislative did. Well, I say, their legislative body did it. Yeah. And, and hopefully our legislative body would do the same thing here. I would hope that the, the Civil Service Board itself would uh, think about that because we've asked them to hold up on, on any action until such times we can get back with the legislative delegation um, to see if we can get this changed and, and, and hopefully uh, cooler heads and cooler minds will prevail that the Civil Service Board will not go forward uh, with the uh, search for a new police chief at this point in time, that they will wait to see what the legislative body is going to do. Um, I think they go into session early this year because I think the primaries are moved up early. So um, it, it shouldn't be uh, a long period of time after the first of the year that the legislature will go into session. And we should know within a few days as to whether or not that uh, act will be changed. And, and so I would <clears throat> beg, I'm begging now, I'm, I don't normally beg anybody, but I'm begging the Civil Service Board. Uh, which I know they ain't going to do, <laughs> but I like for folks sometimes to make me out of a liar, but I doubt that very seriously too. But I'm begging them to hold off on any action as far as doing the police chief search until such time we see what the legislative delegation is going to do. And again, gentlemen, I know all, all eight of us, I start to say all seven of us, but the seven council members passed a resolution and all eight of us signed it asking them to change that act. So let's just see what happens. Uh, and maybe the Civil Service Board will, will listen. I doubt it, but that's my two cent worth anyway. Every. Thank you, Mr. President. I, one thing I, I'd like to, to share with people is this. You can, you can generally count on Mr. Eccles to, uh, to exude wisdom um, on Tuesdays anyway. <laughs> um, and uh, and, and one, thing that, uh, one thing that I, I, I agree with him wholeheartedly on is that uh, the, the, the big uh, thing that differentiates Gaston from those other two cities that were mentioned is that um, those cities had the support of their uh, local legislative delegation to um, to get those changes implemented, to make their uh, arrangement more um, meaningful. Um, to date, we we just haven't had that, um, and uh, and I, I I truly hope that 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 will happen soon. I, and I think the important thing to note. As it, as it relates to this council is that I don't think any of the council members here are interested in seeing the Civil Service um, Act unravel at any level. But uh, the, 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 the chief, uh, the, the, the police chief and the uh, fire chief um, should not be covered under that uh, Civil Service Act. We, we really feel like they should be handled just like other department heads at, at City Hall. Um, you know, something else to note, and again, I've said this before, you know, you, you have to look no further than the last two hires and how expensive they were for the city. Um, you know, why do you want to, you know, you, 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 it begs the question, why is the Civil Service Board in such a hurry 
to, uh, to hire a police chief, knowing the history that we've had in making bad hire decisions and knowing how expensive it is to try to undo um, those decisions. Um, I can tell you that this city is going to do what we are legally required to do. So there, you know, I don't think there's any 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 uh, any debate about that. But um, it, it really it, it really concerns me uh, when uh, the motives be become very political, and uh, and I think we have to be careful about that. I think we have to be careful that we uh, don't make a decision uh, that's uh, that's politically expedient and doesn't <coughs> doesn't benefit the city as a whole. Um, a couple of other things. I, again, I do want to comment on what uh, do want to comment on what uh, Councilman Reed mentioned. We, we we did actually go and attend the open house at Thompson Elementary, and uh, and I, I'm always uh, excited and, and, and proud of the fact that uh, that I have three schools in my district, uh, and Thompson Elementary being one of them. And Thompson's the benefactor of a pilot program uh, where iPads are being used uh, in every uh, for every student in the fourth and fifth grade. Um, there was a you know, very good article in the Times uh, on, uh, on yesterday, uh, and one of the things that got highlighted by uh, one of the teachers and administrators there is the ability for them to differentiate instruction. And, 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 and what that means simply is this. Uh, if you've got children at different levels of learning, um, that iPad, iPad really gives you the opportunity to uh, to 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 not highlight so much the kid that's uh, that's that's struggling, and not cheat the child that's excelling. Um, it gives them the opportunity to continue to progress at their respective levels, and uh, and it makes uh, the teacher's job more of a job of facilitating instruction as opposed to uh, as opposed to driving instruction. So so again, you know, there've been some some stories on CNN and on the on the on the national news that are critical of uh, of iPads and and uh, and I can tell you that this morning I did not see any of that. I saw those children uh, excelling. Uh, one of the things that I've asked for is that uh, objectively we look at it a year from now to see um, you know what the test scores are and and what some of the other things the objective items are relative to what we were before the iPads versus where we are afterwards uh, but I think it's a good pilot pilot program and I think it's something that we we should look at expanding at some level because again it really creates uh, a good learning situation for our children and it also uh, helps us to uh, bridge the technology gap that exists in some of our poor communities that's something that we tend to miss when we start talking about the cost of, uh, of, of, of this technology. So again, they, they could have taken on a, very, a much more expensive route uh, with the, with the uh, very expensive $2,000 Macintosh laptop computers, but, uh, but they chose to take on the uh, you know, six to $800 a piece uh, iPad, um, and, and the children love them. The children love them. We watched these children excel this morning. And again, you know, Ben and I both kind of got nostalgic and uh, we all, almost tear it up because it's just good to see children take an interest in education. So I, I could go on all day about that, but um, but again, let's uh, you know where you can and, 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 and where possible, let's make sure we're supporting that kind of effort. A um, couple other quick announcements. Uh, there's the 411 yard sales uh, begins tomorrow, uh, uh, September 28th, and, uh, and it'll last through Saturday, October the 1st. So please uh, go out and support that. That's always a big event. Uh, and uh, lastly, I have my district meeting uh, for District 2. It's going to be at Thompson <coughs> Community Center on Thursday at 6.30. Uh, so again, September 29th, Thursday at 6.30, uh, the uh, District 2 meeting will be held. Thank you. Really? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the pilot program at Thompson uh, on iPads to be in the hands of every fourth and fifth grade student uh, is a very good program and we have very good information uh, concerning the fact that there are plans to roll that program out to every elementary school in the city in the uh, city school system so it will be rolled out because there's just nothing <coughs> but positive things about that program so the Gadsden city school system is in the process of making plans to roll that out to all the elementary schools. So every kid in the fourth and fifth grade in the city of Gazin will have the opportunity to work mm -hmm. with the iPad. The, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to thank Public Works 
again for uh, the, 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 the signage that we've gotten placed on Payton Rich and Payton Road. Uh, dominant signing um, saying that uh, trucks are not prohibited and will be strictly enforced. That it, it's on, there's no way that a tractor trailer can turn onto Payton Road without seeing that sign, nor come up uh, George Wallace Drive and go onto Payton Ridge without seeing a very dominant sign saying that they are not supposed to be on those streets in the community. So I thank Public Works for that. Uh, we should see a drastic reduction, if not a complete cessation of all tractor trailers on those two streets, uh, tearing, up our, tearing up our streets. Um, the mayor is going, is going to talk extensively, I hope, uh, uh, about the civil service situation. I, I, I just have a problem. I, I have something that just in the back of my mind that can't justify why a program is good for two, three, or four, or five cities in the whole state of Alabama that's not even in any other city in the state. I have a problem with understanding why it's so good that we want to keep it. Uh, it just it, it doesn't compute with my little small brain. And uh, we must have uh, the city, the people in the city of Gazin are the ones that must have control over the things that happen in that city. And, and, and not a, a bunch of people uh, who are appointed by the governor and some of which don't even stay in the city limits of Gadsden. So that, that's, I, I have a problem with that. But uh, we're going to get through it. We're going to work through it. We're going to get questions answered. Uh, and those persons who have questions about the validity of uh, a mayor council program, you know, where they're in charge, or just a mayor, those questions can be answered. But we need a forum in which to do it. We don't need one group going to, the, to this to these uh, people and then saying this, another group going saying this, and another group going. We need to get all of our legislative delegates together and answer these questions and let them see what uh, advantages there could be in making a change. The um, city council meeting is recorded. Uh, it, it's on GITN. Uh, and it's, it's, re it's recorded and it plays repeatedly from one week to the other. I want to encourage the citizens to, if you're not here for this meeting, to tune in um, to, to one of those uh, broadcasts so that you can be informed of some of the things that are going on in, in city council. I know uh, I've seen instances <coughs> just recently where major issues that have uh, been brought up before the council here uh, that some of our constituents and some of our residents were not aware of it. So I, I, I just encourage you to, to pay attention or to at least watch one of those during the week, a whole week. It, it comes on about three times a day. Uh, so be, 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 be looking for that. And that's it. Thank you. Oh, no, no, it's not. I'm sorry. No, it is not. I knew there was one more. The Sickle Cell Foundation is having their Sickle Cell Walk, Walkathon, on October the 8th. There's been a lot of talk about it. Um, we will have the support of the city completely and totally. Uh, we, have, we have gotten that commitment, and for the past three months, four months, five months since they've been planning this uh, walkathon, uh, the city has cooperated immensely with the people who are planning this walkathon. We have with us today here with us uh, in, in, in our audience Ms. Faye Edwards, who is one of the coordinators of this walk. And I'd like to thank her for being here and, and, and say that if you have questions about the walkathon after this meeting, she'll be glad to answer those questions for you. <laughs> Uh, but we look forward to this event. It's going to encompass all of uh, Calhoun County, Blount County, Cherokee, Clay, Cleveland, Coburn, Edward, Jefferson, Randolph, St. Clair, Shelby, Talladega, and Walker. Those are all, those are all the counties that are in this area uh, that, we, that are supporting the Sickle Cell Walkathon. I also would like to also tell you that we have the Sickle Cell Foundation has an office. 
uh, at the JW Stewart uh, building uh, on Springfield Avenue uh, so that you can, uh, you can contact them if you need to have uh, or get information or if you need to talk to someone about sickle cell, anything about sickle cell. And we have a number that you can get, that you can get for that building here after this meeting. And uh, I'm going to ask Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Fainel if you would request to be on the agenda next uh, Tuesday for council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, I have something I overlooked when I was speaking. I would like to announce that I'm going to have a district meeting uh, next, uh, uh, I guess, next Tuesday, which will be uh, October the 4th. It'll be October the 4th. <laughs> We're going to meet at the Arthur Green Room. Uh, a group of people from uh, around Gadsden Middle School is driving this uh, particular meeting, but everybody in the district is certainly welcome. So that's uh, October the 4th, 6 o'clock, Arthur Green Room. We'll have a District 5 meeting. So I encourage everybody in the district to come out. Thank you. <coughs> I'd like to ask the mayor a question before he speaks. I've had one, one person who tells me that uh, we ought to leave the police chief under the civil service board because if we change it, it will be nothing but a political thing and that every time we change mayors, we'll change police, police chief and fire chief. I want to ask the mayor, when he came in, how many directors did you uh, fire and put your people in? None. It's just not that easy to do. You have to have a reason to fire somebody. You can't just fire somebody and put them in. There has to be a reason. So uh, I just wanted to put that out so that everybody okay, that, can. You have let, to let, have me, let me remind everybody that we had a mayor come in one time <coughs> and, uh, and dismissed one of the department heads. Uh, probably he didn't have just cause to do it. And when it wound up, it cost the city about $150,000 when it was all over. So you don't just dismiss somebody because you want to. You better have just cause. That's right. And, you you know, I, I deal with them just practically all of them on a daily basis. There's about 15. Uh, you know, some of them were for me, I guess. Some of them weren't. I don't care about all that. I'm in here to do a job what the people sent me up here to do. And it's to be fair, honest, open, and accountable, especially financially. And, and that's what we do, and I get along with all of them. But if I have a problem, or if I have a problem in their department, I can tell one of them sort of what's going on, and they take care of it or get back with me and keep me posted. It's not an unknown factor when I try to find out what, what's happening. And, but anyway, I want to first ask you all a question. Did anybody up here get a call from the Gazin Times about uh, all the comments were made in the paper yesterday, if there's any kind of our view on the, any of that? Nope. I didn't either. Uh, it really disappoints me that uh, I didn't read anything that was truthful. <laughs> it really disappoints me that uh, the Times doesn't, uh, you know, call and verify things before they just put in hearsay and uh, somebody who has an agenda's comments. That really bothers me. But I'm not. I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, I, that's that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> what I do want to say is, it's the process of the Civil Service Board. You know, uh, it's controlled, and, and people talk about politics, it's controlled by political activists and special interest groups in other municipalities and in the county and one or two in the city of Gadsden. And I'm not talking about the Civil Service Board. I'm talking about the way that we get appointees on there. And it's appointed by the governor. The former governor appointed, I think, four of the five people that's on there now without any input from us, the mayor's office, the city council, or anybody. Uh, I don't know how you could get more political than that. Uh, I think some people would go along with anything if, uh, as long as it was their special interest group, if it was Godzilla they was trying to put in there. But uh, also, <laughs> the, uh, you know, let, let me tell you what happens. Uh, say I wanted to uh, get rid of the chief, take him to the Civil Service Board. Well, you're going to be around at least a minimum of a couple hundred thousand dollars. Then it's going to be appealed to civil, uh, to civil circuit court. And it's another couple hundred thousand. And it could be more depending on how many delays and how many postponements. And it could go on for two or three years. We don't need all that kind of stuff, and we certainly don't need to spend that much money on, on an issue like that. Uh, when all the other directors, you know, if we have just cause, 
we call them in, we talk to the attorney, but I haven't done any of that. I've been here all going on uh, about to start my sixth, I guess, fifth, 25th or something, year. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of money. It's the, the most important part, I guess you would say that, along with finance, public safety is. And uh, it's 40 percent of our budget. It's several million dollars. Uh, you know, and if you don't really have any input about a lot of things that go on down there or need to know, because most of the calls come to my office. And if anybody tries to see that you, anybody, uh, and this relates a little bit to what was said yesterday, anybody, and you can ask anybody that works in my office, 99% of the people who come to see me, if I'm not busy, I bring them in and talk to them and see what they want and try to handle the problem or send it to the right department. And, you know, if you get somebody who wants to con the system, stay in here, do what they want to, not be cooperative, and then they know that if you take them, they're going to sue and it's going to wind up in court after the Civil Service Board, and they're probably going to get some kind of settlement because your insurance starts wanting to settle when the numbers get so high. And that ain't what we need to happen with our money. We don't need it. Uh, and as long as I'm here, I'm going to try not to have it. Also, uh, Another issue is, you know, it's a lot of it's about greed. You, you ask about greed. It's about greed. I've been, this is my fifth out of six, uh, let's see, fifth budget out of six years. And when I got in here, uh, we had very little money, and everybody knows all that, less than a month's operating expenses. And we started changing a lot of things. Our employment, uh, our retirement, the police and fire was 1.9 percent. They can say, well, I'm blaming. I'm not blaming them. It's just the way things happened on, uh, before I got here. Well, and that was in uh, 03. It was 1.9 percent. The city paid out of everybody's check towards the retirement system for their retirement. When I got in office, it was a little over 26 percent. You name one place in the state of Alabama that you can go and get paid. 26% of your weekly salary that your employer will pay it into your retirement system. I would, I would like to go and try to get a job there if that's the case. Uh, after all this is done, we were the highest in the state. We're still going to be second highest in the state. We're going to be around somewhere around 20%, 18 or something. The counties is 6%. And, you, and I can show you a list. We had a printout of everybody. We were way up at the top. But anyway, we've also given raises. Uh, We've given raises uh, five out of six, five out of six budgets that we've done. Uh, we've absorbed insurance since 1991. Uh, there was a resolution passed to pass it along to employees, but it's never been done but one time, and that was the second year I was in office. A family in the city of Gazin who has our insurance pays $1,553 a year for insurance. The bug man told me he paid $100 a week that sprayed my house the other day. Uh, you know, and, and I'm glad we got good benefits. I don't have nothing against the benefits. I'm glad we got good benefits. I'm glad of all the things that we have. But at a certain point, we have an obligation, which should be first, to take care of the taxpaying citizens. And, and all this boils down to is some few, because I've had a lot of calls from the other side, and police and fire who don't agree with what was in the paper. Uh, I've been told, and that's why it bothers me that uh, when I found out you know the voting thing in the in the editorial the vote how many people were voted for 50 percent you know what I'm saying and the beginners they always speak out louder than the people who uh, who want to do the right thing but you know we we're supposed to take care of the citizens and the taxpayers we're supposed to be accountable we try to do the best we can but any city you go to I would dare to say especially our size, they're not in nearly as good shape as we are for benefits, salaries, or anything else. Our benefit package range, and I don't have the exact figures, from approximately 21000 up to about twenty-six or 7000 depending on your pay range. So, you know, those are some pretty good benefits. And if you get in the real world, you're going to find out that you, <laughs> you, you start paying your own insurance and you, you're going to be amazed at what you will pay. Uh, I guess the last thing I'd like to say I don't understand the Civil Service Board being in a hurry. You know, we got Captain Harbin, two letters, one from the Civil Service Board attorney and one from our attorney, says there's no time limit on when I appoint an acting chief. There's nothing that says I can't appoint one for an indefinite time. 
Well, why don't we have some continuity? We have somebody who's been 38 years here, worked in all the departments, knows where all the problems are, knows what's good and what's bad and what works and what doesn't work. What's the hurry on trying to appoint somebody? And I'm telling you that they're getting pressure from those special interest groups I named, uh, not in the city of Gazin, and each one of them special groups, and I'm told from some people that's involved with them who I'm friends with, that they each have a person picked out already, and that's the big rush on the whole situation. So there we go again. But uh, I'm talking to the citizens who I represent and the board, the council represents. We want to do the right thing, and if you don't like what's going on, you need to pay attention, speak up, call your legislators, and call the civil service board. I just don't see what the rush is. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. We adjourn. So moved.